A grace to you and peace from our God and Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, dear friends, it's only natural, uh, perhaps uh, living in the United States of America, that we would uh, come to believe that if God is with us, we will prosper. That everything will always be wonderful and we will always enjoy a great blessings. And then maybe you turn on your Christian radio or the Christian television and, and there's some speaker saying, you know what, if you can just kind of get everything right. You know, if you're doing good, if you're leading a good life, God will bless you. And maybe you and I, we, we look around at our own lives and, and we say, well, you know, this, this kind of big thing just went wrong. I, I, I got up this morning and my, my hip kind of hurts. Yeah. My, my, my feet, they're not quite taking me to the places that I used to be able to uh, go and there's a, a little bit of weakness here and I, I have, you know, one of my sons is kind of in trouble over there and, and I, I've been trying to lead a good life. And I, I made it here to church th this morning and we maybe start to wonder, well, what is going wrong? I'm trying my best. I'm doing the Christian stuff, but this particular area in my life isn't quite what I wanted. And, and then we can kind of start to feel bad about ourselves. We can start to feel bad even about God. And yet for today, we have our wonderful text that comes to us and it tells us, you know, in this world, it's not going to be perfect. Right? Jesus himself said, if people are going to persecute me, yeah, they're, they're going to persecute you as well. Now, Jesus tells us, if my life in this world wasn't super smooth, why do you expect that your life is going to be super smooth? And we say, oh. And again, today you might be saying, well, 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 Pastor, I don't know if that's what I wanted to hear. Right? You know, I, I, I kind of wanted to come to church and you would tell me that everything is going to be okay. And if I just follow the three-point plan, right, I, I'm sure that I can get it together and my life can work out really well. But unfortunately, the Bible tells us today, right, that there's going to be some troubles. There's going to be some conflicts. There's going to be times when you feel like you're smashed. But the hope is God will lift you up again. And there's going to be times when you feel like things on your life are a train wreck. And God says he can come and put the pieces back in place and make you whole once more. You see, the, the hope is not that if I can somehow get everything right, then life will be super smooth, but rather the hope is that I have a God who can carry me when my feet don't work so well. I have a God who can put things back together even though it seems that they've been blown apart. I have a God that can come and minister to me in my dark hours of need. Now, sure, we, we could wish, okay, that if I just could live a good life, I would never have any dark hours of need. But God tells us that that's not going to be the case. But where the hope comes from is that when I have that dark hour of need, I have God with me. Right? He's going to be beside me. He's going to lift me up and he's going to comfort me. 
Okay, I ever thought very much about the wonderful narrative of uh, Lazarus, uh, the brother of Mary and Martha. Now, Jesus, in his ministry, he spent much time with Mary and Martha. He kind of hung out at their house. And, and we have the wonderful uh, narrative about how you know, Martha is always <coughs> baking and cooking and preparing wonderful meals and, and, and uh, her her layabout sister Mary, you know, just kind of sits at Jesus' feet and doesn't really help out very much, you know. And Martha gets kind of annoyed about that from time to time and comes and says, you know, come on, Jesus, aren't you going to, you know, make Mary help out around here at, at all? She just lays about and sits at your feet, listening to your teachings. When, when is she going to help me with the, the supper? And of course, Jesus responds and says, no, Mary has chosen the better part. Well, I'm here and I'm able to speak and to teach. There is Mary listening to my teaching, right? She has chosen the, the better part to listen to Jesus, to hear his words and have his words in your heart is better than serving. Wow. That seems bizarre, doesn't it? But that's what Jesus said, right? It's better to listen to me and have my word in your heart than to just be out there doing stuff all the time. So listen to Jesus. He has this close relationship with them and, and he's off, you know, uh, doing some mission work and he gets word, Lazarus has fallen ill. And of course, he, being Jesus, he knows how everything will transpire. He knows how it's going to play out. But, you know, Lazarus has fallen ill. You know, of course, right, if Jesus comes, Lazarus will be okay, won't he? Jesus has healed countless hundreds of people by this time in his ministry. All we have to do is get Jesus over to the house and Lazarus will be okay. But yet Jesus delays in coming. He, he, he doesn't get there right away. A Lazarus dies. By the time Jesus gets there, Lazarus has been in the tomb for a couple of days. In fact, an interesting sidelight, you know, Jesus says he wants to go to the tomb, he wants to open it up, and, and Mary and Martha say, but it will stink. His body's been decaying for a couple of days. He opened the tomb, it will not be a, a bad odor. I, mean, I don't know if you want to do that. But when Jesus arrives upon the scene, it's kind of interesting that first, you know, the sisters rebuke him, don't they? Lord, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. Come on, Lord. Where were you? Why didn't you show up? We have been faithfully serving you through this time of your ministry. If anyone deserves God's blessing, it would be us. We've been faithful. We've been true. We've been doing the work. Lord, where were you? And the Bible records the shortest line in Scripture, doesn't it? Jesus wept. He feels their pain. He knows what it is to lose people that we care about. He knows what it is to be brokenhearted. He knows what it is to feel that grief. In that very same way, when you and I are going through hard times, it's not that Jesus forgot about us. He knows what's going on. And it's not that Jesus doesn't care. He doesn't have any compassion. No, of course 
He does. When you and I are going through the most difficult days of our lives, Jesus is weeping for us. He loves us that much. He wants us to have good things. He weeps because there's sin in this world. And the hardships that we experience, though sometimes are maybe the result of our own sin, often the difficulties we experience are the result of the sins of other people. And still we have to go through those. And, and still we are marked by those experiences. We were completely innocent. And that there was nothing that we possibly could have did differently. And yet that sin impacted our lives. And we're hurting. We're, we're feeling crushed. Right? We're beat down. You know, everything seems to be going wrong. And we come to realize. Right? This hope that we carry around, it's in a jar of clay. Ow. Man, I went to church and the pastor called me a jar of clay. Right? Well, what's that about? But in this day of self-esteem and, you know, trying to build people up, we don't like to think that I'm just a jar of clay. It just sounds icky, doesn't it? I'm a, a golden vessel. Right? I'm ordained with jewels. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm really somebody. A jar of clay. But yeah, that's what the Lord comes and tells us. You know, we are just jars of clay. Uh, another term in Scripture that the Apostle Paul used it as he said, you know, if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a place in the heavens not built by human hands. Okay, you, you and I are tents. We get damaged by the wind at times. The, the solar radiation beats down on us and maybe the, the roof starts to get a little bit rotten if we've been around for 60, 70, or 80 years. You know, I'm, I'm not the good-looking tent that I used to be. I was brand new. A, a jar of clay, a, a tent. Right? That's what the Lord says that we are. The hope that we have is inside of us, and that hope is Jesus, our Savior, isn't it? That's the wonder, and, and that's the glory. It's what you can see in our lives as we go through these difficult experiences. As uh, people come to see that we suffer just like they do, but we're not completely crushed because the Lord lifts us up again. And we're not completely broken because the Lord comes alongside of us and he walks with us through the difficulty. Kind of thinking of, about, you know, national holidays and uh, I do have kind of a pet peeve when it seems to me like history is being rewritten. And so I just kind of thinking about it through this week, I you know, like George Washington. I, I hope you like him too still. But George Washington, he comes to the end of his uh, life. He, he goes out to uh, look at, at his fields. He's out on his horse, and, and he's a couple hours from home, and he's caught in this snowstorm that he didn't anticipate. And the, the historians record that you know when he finally got back to his house, he'd been riding through a, a blizzard for about two hours, and the, the snow was just kind of caked in his hair, and 
as a result of that, he became ill uh, with, within just a, a little bit of returning to Mount Vernon. And so, of course, I call the doctors of the day, and I don't know if you studied much about medicine during that time, but for George Washington, his throat is beginning to swell, and he's having difficulty speaking, and of course, what do they do in that day and time? The advanced medical team decides that he must be bled. Right, that's the process where you put leeches on the person and, and you begin to take out some of their uh, blood. And the opinion was, no, your, your blood kind of gets icky and you know, if we just kind of take that icky blood out, you will feel better. Okay, and so they're, they're putting leeches on him and, and they're bleeding him. And uh, another thing they did at the time was, well, you, you might as well, it's kind of like today where we have you know, chemotherapy and we have radiation but they injected people with mercury. Now, of course, you and I today know that mercury is really bad, right? But back in, in that time, you know, they're injecting people with this uh, kind of poison. And uh, again, the thinking is we, we want to relieve the, the conscription, the, the swelling in his throat because that, that'll be dangerous. He's having trouble breathing, right? And so these are the, the means uh, that they're using. And George Washington goes through an extremely painful death. It's maybe hard to imagine. They didn't have painkillers that they really gave him, but they just kept you know, taking his blood more and more, and they kept injecting him with more and more you know, mercury, which is a poison. And finally, it was recorded in a, a biography that I read from 1836. George Washington says, Father of mercies, take me to thyself. And he dies. Now, unfortunately, today, if you go to, to Google or, you know, you have your little Alexa, you know, in your living room and you say, hey, Alexa, what were George Washington's last words? And Alexa uh, came back to me this week and she said, said to me, well, it, it said to me, right, the AI, George Washington's last words were, it is well. Okay. Well, that, that's kind of different, isn't it? Father of mercies, take me to thyself. It's, it's a little bit different that it is well. I, I guess some people could argue, well, it, it's similar. Uh, it's kind of similar. But no, that's what they're trying to do to history in our land today. You can't even get the fellow's last words right. Because, oh, we wouldn't want George Washington to be saying, Father of mercies, take me to thyself. That seems like he's a Christian. That seems like he believed in God. Oh, we, we certainly wouldn't want, want people to have that opinion. But why? Why do we not want that to be people's opinion anymore? I bring that up once again to kind of reinforce the point. You and I might say to, to ourselves, you know, if anyone deserved to just kind of die in his sleep, right? you and I might say, well, George Washington, right? The founder of our country, after the many wonderful things that, that he did for us, establishing our, our government and leading our armies against the British, you know, if we could picture anybody having that kind of a peaceful death at home in their bed as they sleep, right? shouldn't that be General Washington? 
But no, in this world we have trouble. And in this world people have great difficulty. And in this world even George Washington right, was caught in a snowstorm he didn't anticipate. It, it led to a, a sickness that within you know 12 hours he was gone. And he himself, in some of the words before his last sentence, said, you know, I die hard. Yet I'm sure God can make something good from this. I die hard, and I kind of wish things could be different. He, he said something like that as well. But then his last words, Father of mercies, take me to thyself. Yeah, in this world we are in jars of clay. And in this world, no matter how great we might become, we could still go through an agonizing death. But hopefully, for us as Christians, in this world, if our last words could be, Father of mercies, take me to thyself, right? all the people standing around and all the people that would hear of that would say, there was a Christian. There was something different about them. When they were going through an agonizing death, I didn't hear them cursing and swearing. I didn't hear them calling out uh, God and challenging him. I didn't hear them, you know, bad-mouthing the Christian faith or saying that this is all fake. Right? What did I hear? I heard those words of faith. I heard the Lord himself speaking through that person. I saw something I didn't expect. Something other world. Something that made me pause <laughs> and say, maybe this Christian thing is real. <clears throat> because look at those people they were broken but not destroyed they were pushed back into a corner but not killed they had their lives pressed down but they are still standing there's something different there. Something that only comes from Jesus. So yes, dear friends, in this world we're gonna have trouble and in this world we will be pressed back. But in this world we have one we can count on. That when I'm down, he'll lift me up again. And when my heart is broken, he will come and comfort me. And when things are just going wrong and all I see is blackness, he will bring the light once more. He loves you so much. And I tell you one more time, he knows what you're going through. He's not somehow asleep at the wheel. He understands the things that you're feeling. He knows the areas of your life that are messed up right now. And he weeps with you. He's not just indifferent. You know, dear friends, if I had been going to Lazarus' house, knowing that I'm 
gonna raise him from the dead? Being confronted with Mary and Martha, or weeping and crying and saying, if he had only been there, Lazarus would not have died. I would have trouble feeling compassion because I know I'm going out to the tomb and I'm going to raise him from the dead. That'd be me. I'm on my mission. I'm going to that town. I'm going to stand. I'm going to speak the word. Lazarus is going to be coming out. Oh, everyone is going to be cheering. Come on, Mary and Martha, get with the program. It's a happy time. But no, confronted with the grief of Mary and Martha, Jesus wept with them. And Jesus weeps with us. We don't know what tomorrow might hold. Maybe the Lord will come through with a great miracle and we'll all just say, well, that was silly. Why did I feel so bad? But also, we could experience a prison and we can experience death. And we could be riding out in our fields one afternoon and the freak snowstorm could come upon us. And the medical treatments could be all wrong. And still, if at the end we could say, Father of mercies, take me to thyself. That's where the gold is, isn't it? We live in jars of clay. But it's what's inside that brings others to Christ. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be in your hearts and minds now and always. Amen. Amen.